guys, it's Kat and I am back today with some late night filming. Um, and this is a video that just could not wait because it's sort of like my daily project that I've been waiting a whole month to sort of tell you guys about. Uh, it's a new project on my channel that I decided to do just as a way to, um, I don't know, help minimize my makeup collection. It's There's a lot of old makeup there. There's a lot of makeup I don't use. Um, I'm sort of trying to minimize the space it takes up. So this year I thought I would tackle lip products and do a year long trial and declutter of my whole lip collection, which is massive. So um, I will explain it in a, in a bit more detail, but I did allude to this project a couple of videos back. I had a lot of people um, sort of give suggestions on how I should do this. And a lot of people gave some great name suggestions. What I've ultimately decided to call this project is um, the Project Apocalypse. Um, and I thought that was very suiting because of the pandemic. And um, I was pretty much editing uh, Beauty News, sort of looking back on trends of 2020. And um, I made like a, we made some jokes about the apocalypse and I was like, apocalypse. Yeah, that's perfect for this project. Now I did have suggestions, people saying you should do like 365 days of lipsticks and a few other projects that have been going around for a few years. Um, I'll explain what I'm doing in this series and how I'm doing it and why it sort of differs from um, some of the projects that are going around. People might be doing this exact same thing, but I haven't watched them. Um, I'm just doing doing it to the beat of my own drum, which is why I wanted to call it something else and not sort of piggy piggyback on someone else's concept when I haven't watched their concept. So essentially what I'm doing is I went through and I didn't take inventory, but I did roughly count my whole lip collection. Now, um, including lip glosses, liquid lipsticks, tinted lip balms, um, you know, lip everything, lip products besides your standard clear lip balms, besides those, um, I counted, and I, look, it got a bit out of hand because there were things that I left out and there were things hidden in drawers and there were things that I found in my handbags, but there were somewhere around 450 to 500 lip products that I currently have in my makeup collection. Now that is ridiculous. I know that, I know that. I have been wearing lipstick for going on, let's say, close to 20 years. So lips have been a thing of mine um, as well as eyeshadows, but mainly lipsticks have been my sort of favorite makeup product for a long time. So it does make sense that I have quite a big collection, but also I find that being in this sort of industry where I review products and I wear products a lot, um, I have come across a lot in PR. So not everything that I have um, I purchased myself, a lot of it was sent to me, um, and that's where throughout this project you might see full collections of shades. Normally I would not buy the full collection of, you know, lip products because that's a lot, um, but if I do have it, it's because I've been sent them in PR. So with my sort of love for lipstick and also this channel and reviewing products, um, I have amassed a lot of lip products over the last few years. Um, it is not a normal amount, I'm not saying, everyone should have nearly 500 lip products. It is very excessive, which is why I'm trying to whittle it down this year. Um, I also want to mention a few people will like go through and get rid of old things and all that kind of stuff. I've done that. Uh, 2020 alone, I decluttered my lip collection twice. I have got rid of a lot of old, funky, gross lipsticks and lip products that I do not want. These, let's call it 500 lip products, are ones that survived past culls. Can you believe that? They actually survived them. And it's not saying that all of these are fantastic formulas, but there was something about the lip product, whether I liked the shade, whether I liked the brand, whether I wanted to give it another chance. Maybe it was a shade that I thought was sort of unique to my collection. So there was a reason I kept it. And I told myself I will try this again and then make my decision down the track if I want to keep it. And I never did that. So this is the year where I'm trying to go through all my lip products, wear them at least once and make a snap decision. Do I want to keep this or not? And then at the end of the month, show you 
photos of the lip products, tell you my mini reviews, how I went with them and tell you ultimately, will I declutter the product or not? It's gonna be a big project. Um, and every month when I check in, I'll be reflecting on the prior month. So this video, I'm reflecting on my progress of January and I actually made some really good progress in January. So I'm very proud of myself. Um, I also wanna say that I don't really have rules to this where I'm like, I need to wear a lipstick a day. Um, there's not gonna be, I don't wear makeup every single day, but there are some days where I might, for example, ColourPop, I've got a bunch of lippy sticks. Um, what I ended up doing last month was trying a couple of them over a couple of days, seeing how they wear, seeing how they apply, and then doing lip swatches of the other shades I had and made I made a decision based on the lip swatches and testing of the formula from the other shades, do I wanna keep it? So some days I did lip swatches of like six lip products, other days I wore no lip products. So it's not like a lip product a day. Some weeks I might go days without wearing lip products and other weeks I might use like heaps of them. So um, my goal is to at least try 20 lip products a month. This month I tried 44, which is a lot. So before I talk about the products individually and I go through and review them and tell you what I'm keeping and I'm not keeping, um, I did wanna say there's gonna be questions on what am I doing with these? And the answer is if they're products that aren't old and funky, like this lipstick is probably like five or six years old. If they're products that aren't old and funky and they're things that I think someone in my life might enjoy, I will, endeavor to sterilize them and pass them on to people. But if they're things like lip glosses where you're like smearing things on and putting it in and doing this, if I don't want it, I'm gonna chuck it out. It is what it is. So I decided in January to focus on a theme and I will probably do this in February as well. Um, I just found it was really easy to pick a brand and be like, let's just pull out everything I have from that brand and just work through it throughout the month. Now. The brand I decided to choose for January was ColourPop. Now I did actually test all of my ColourPop products um, probably by week three of January. So what I did in the last week was I pulled out some sort of drugstore priced lip products to just tack on the end. So it's sort of like ColourPop and drugstore lip products that I'm talking about this month. All right, so what I decided to try first from ColourPop is arguably one of my favorite ColourPop lip products they're lippy, lippy sticks. You can see that I've got quite a few of them and um, I did have more, but I culled them throughout the years. These were the ones I kept because whenever I swatched them, I'm like, oh, I could use these shades. Like there's beautiful nudes and there's beautiful sort of terracotta shades and there's uh, dark reds and whatever. Like they're shades that I can see myself using. So I thought I'm gonna work through these because I, I know the formula, I like the formula. Um, and it was just a sort of easy entry point into this project. Now, the first lipstick I decided to try, which I'll have on the screen, is the shade Ziggy. Now, I didn't actually realize that I've actually got two Ziggies. I used one, I really liked how it wore, but I was like, I'm really not gonna use this color. So, I made some notes. Um, so this is a matte X formula, so it's more matte than their traditional matte formula. You will see some photos on the screen later on like um, how they sort of differ. And the matte does have a bit of a creamy sheen to it. The matte X is pretty much matte straight off the bat. I don't have dry lips, so I liked both formulas. My notes are that these are very pigmented, easy to apply. They're matte on me, but not too drying. I originally looked at the shade and thought this looks like a nice dark nude, but it applied more like a brick red on me. So I've got some photos on the screen of when I first applied it after lunch, which I ate like lasagna and other greasy foods. And then I've also got it five hours after I first applied it. So you can see that on the screen, wears really, really beautifully, really comfortable on me. Um, and the only thing I didn't love about this, and it, there's nothing wrong with it, but the shade on me was a little bit dark and something I wouldn't reach for on a daily basis. So I ultimately decided I don't need this shade. But then I realized I've got two of these shades and then when I was swatching the other one a few days later, I was like, I love this shade, I wanna keep it. So I'm very confused because in my head, I'm like, these are different. One looks more orange, one looks more terracotta, but swatching them now, I'm like, they're the same. So I'm gonna get rid of them both. The next day I tried the shade Parker, which is a really beautiful nude. So my notes to this was, I love the shade. It's a perfect mid-tone nude for me. It's a very pigmented, it's really creamy, um, but it doesn't feel super matte. So this is a matte formula, not the matte X. 
and um, I'm keeping this. This is definitely, for me, a really flattering nude. It looks really beautiful on the lips. And what I sort of want to do maybe at the end of this project is go through the products that I'm keeping and then sort of do a swatch off. See how many dupes I have. Um, do I need three of the same colored nudes? Which formulas do I like most? So I'll probably do that at the very end. I don't know if this will survive that swatch off, um, but I really like the color and you see a photo on the screen. I found it to be really flattering, wore really beautifully. So I'm keeping that. So I did decide to take a break from lippy sticks and try a few other things, which I'll come back to, but I thought I'll just finish up with the lippy sticks and um, on the screen you'll see swatches of the shades that I have and unfortunately besides Parker I've decided to get rid of all of these so I'm going to run through them you'll see them on the screen and I'll sort of just explain why I've decided not to keep them there were two shades I was really tossing up between do I don't I do I don't I and I ultimately thought look if it if I'm unsure with this project because I want it to be ruthless, I'm gonna take that as a sign that I don't need it. The next shade I've decided to try and it'll be on the screen is the shade Brink. Now, I really like this shade. Um, historically, I've worn this quite a lot. It's one of my most used lippy sticks, um, but compared to Parker, I just like Parker a lot more. So I decided, do I need heaps of nudes of these? No, this is more of a pink tone nude. Parker is more of a true sort of mid-tone brownie, my lips but better nude. So I've gone for that one instead. Uh, the next one is Ziggy, which is a matte X. Again, this was the one that I tried on day one, but a different tube of it. Now in this photo, I was like, this is a gorgeous color. I need this in my life. I'm gonna keep it. I had my little box tick that I'm gonna keep it. And then I realized it's the same as the first one that I tried and I've decided I'm not gonna keep it. But there you go, two photos. The next shades are Grunge, which is more of a brown toned. I've got Lady, which is another brown tone. Um, you can see how glossy these are compared to the matte X on me. Then I've got the shade Chateau, which is a matte X. It's a really nice wine color, um, but it's a little bit high maintenance. These colors, I always find that they sort of smear on me. They're a little bit hard to maintain. So there's that. Uh, there's Bossy, which is a really nice bright red and then there's also goldie which is a darker red now i was looking at keeping the last two but i do know i have a very extensive red lip collection and if i haven't reached for these in years i don't need them so all of these lippy sticks except for parker are going all right the next things i decided to have a play with were the ultra blotted lip um, now these are an interesting formula. So they're very, very thin. Uh, it's a liquid lipstick, but it is very thin and it's not as opaque or as thick as their traditional matte liquid lipstick. So um, you can see in the tube here, it's quite bright, but it translates a little bit more sheer on the lips. Now I do have three shades here. I've got Swing Away. Um, I've got Double Double, which is this nice sort of magenta pink shade. And I've got Doozy, which again is sort of like a pinky nude, not really my shade, but I decided to give these a crack. Now I started with Swing Away, which was that beautiful sort of ready, orangey coral shade, which is a very me shade. Um, and the notes I have, I said, it's a lovely color. It's a really pretty effect on the lips. Um, it is quite bold when you first apply it and it is nice and even, but it's not super opaque. So if you didn't want that really, really strong, thick looking lip, but you want a nice color, this is quite a nice one. Um, it does give a matte stain type effect, which is a nice look, but it is dry as Hell, I had that in caps, dry as hell. Felt like chalk within five minutes of application and it really didn't feel any better after that. Now, what I sort of decided ultimately with these lip products was that they were too dry for what I like and I feel like I can get the effect with other products. Also, when it came to this uh, double double shade, I just found that it wasn't as impactful. If I'm going for this shade pink, I kind of want it to be bold. I like a bold lip. So picking this up and then having the effect that you see on the screen, I was like, it's a little bit 
lackluster for me personally. I can understand why people like these, but for me personally, I just found them a little bit bland. They also didn't wear the best because they were so thin and they just never felt super comfortable because they were very chalky and they felt a little bit chunky. They didn't look chunky, but they felt like you could feel this, the lip texture. So I decided not to keep any of these. Okay, talking about sort of these bright color that applies fairly sheer, which I'll give you just, I'll just swatch double double for you. So you can see it is nice and even, but it is that sort of blotted effect. Um, I decided to jump to my only ultra matte lip that I had left in my collection. Now I have tried a lot of ultra matte lips in the past. I think when I first placed into ColourPop order, I probably ordered like 10 of them. So it was right at the peak of the liquid lip trend, um, you know, the matte liquid lip, the bold, whatever. Um, and I pretty much throughout the years decluttered all of them because I didn't like them. The only reason why this one shade, which is on the grill, was left over it was because whenever I swatch this shade, I'm like, it is gorgeous. It is such a beautiful shade. So compare that, how bold that is to the blotted. Like you can see why this is a blotted lip and that's the ultra matte. This is opaque as heck. The color is phenomenal, but this was, I can tell you, the grossest lip product I have tried in such a long time. I don't know, I'm sure I've tried this before. I just haven't, it's not as if I've just watched it. I clearly have tried it. I don't know why I just didn't throw it straight in the bin because I literally see in capital letters in front of me, straight in the bin, straight in the bin. That was my note to this because it was ab <laughs> my first note, absolute piece of shit. I'll read it, thick, suffocating, dries down like clay and feels puckered and flakes off in chunks. The only redeeming quality is the pretty shade and the opacity. Straight in the bin was my notes exactly. I'll have on the screen how this looked. I literally wore this, I put it on uh, and I drove my car to the shops and I had to take it off. And in that time, I literally had chunks falling off my lips. It was disgusting. So this is definitely not staying. And even though the color is gorgeous, I did find that I can sort of dupe the color with stains and other products. Um, this just, I, even if it's a nice color, I cannot make this work. So this is in the bin. All right, then I decided to take a bit of a break from the drying color that is their blotted lips and their ultra matte. And I wanted to test out my just a tint lip crayon. So I love how these smell. Uh, I did actually have the full set. They smell like passion fruit, really nice. Um, I did actually have the full set and these are the only ones I kept because uh, even though I didn't mind them, I just thought I could give them to other people who will use them more because realistically, I only will use the nude ones. So what are my notes? So I first tried the Rise and Shine, which is um, this sort of peachy shade. And I am on and off about keeping this um, because it is a pretty shade. You'll see it on the screen. Um, my notes are that it's very thin, but it's not sticky. It has a nice amount of color and applies evenly. Um, you can build it up slightly or apply a really thin layer for a small amount of color. It wears down well and it's comfortable the whole time. It's not nourishing though, so it doesn't leave your lips feeling hydrated. It's almost as though as soon as it wears off, any hydration is gone. And it also doesn't last a long time on the lips because these are so thin and they don't have that sticky quality that sort of coat the lips. It's pretty much, you have a cup of tea and it's, it's gone. I don't even know if I have a swatch photo, but that's the peachy shade that I'm just talking about. Um, then I decided to try this shade here, which is cherry picking. Um, again, it's like a nice sort of brownie, nude a little bit deeper 
Um, not a nude that I normally will go for. So again, I don't mind the formula, just not a shade that I'd really wear on a daily basis. I didn't find it very flattering on me. The shade that I did love the most and the one that I've used the most is Give Me S'more. And again, this is just because it's more of that true sort of beigey nude shade where I can throw this on without even needing a mirror. It looks nice. It sort of evens out the lip tone, uh, gives a bit of a shine, a little bit of a color, and um, I can you know, chuck this on when I'm in the car. I can, you know, whatever. So out of all three, I was thinking of keeping the peach one as well. But realistically, I'm like, I've got so many lip products. I'm just keeping Give Me S'more. Then I decided to play with some more of their sort of gloss formulas. I've got here two Lux glosses and two Lux lip oils. So I'll read you what I thought about these and let you know which ones I'm keeping. So I started with the Lux glosses. So I've got the shades here, Slow Motion and Come Through. Slow Motion is more of a nude cream. There's no shimmer to it. And Slow Motion is sort of like the same color, but it's a little bit sheerer in pigmentation and it's got a little bit of shimmer in it. So very, very similar. They're my sort of nude shades that's why i've kept these ones um, but let's talk about the formula so when it comes to slow motion which is the cream one i said i really like the color it's really pretty it gives a nice amount of color and shine to the lips but it feels quite heavy these are quite thick sticky glosses that if you purse your lips together it like leaves little like lines they're they're quite sticky these were also really heavily scented and i find what i've noticed doing this is that when things are really heavily scented, I almost get a little bit of a, like a tingle to my lips when there shouldn't be a tingle, just because I feel like the fragrance is like irritating my lips, if that makes sense. And that's what I found with this. I found there was a little bit of a tingle that just didn't really go away. It was quite distracting. I couldn't really just ignore it and the scent was really overpowering and in my opinion not the nicest so this had almost like an artificial chalk orange scent that was quite sickly and again really distracting and because it was quite strong it had that sort of chemical tingle going on which I wasn't a big fan of I also found that this shade um, which I liked the most was very similar to the ju just a tint uh, give me small but I liked this formula better than this so when it came to the shade Come Through, which again is slightly sheerer, a little bit shimmery, um, I just didn't love this sort of sticky, very highly fragranced, artificial chemical sort of vibe. Um, even though they looked pretty, I just didn't feel like I needed them. And I know for a fact I have better glosses in my collection of very similar colors. So I didn't decide to keep those. Then came the Lux Lip oils. Now these are different. I feel like what Colourpop did, they released these after the, um, the Lux glosses and I sort of feel like they heard the feedback of these and tried to correct it with the lip oils, which I thought was not a bad idea. I've got the shades Blossom Out, which is this sort of peachy with a pearlescent sort of sheen to it. And I've got uh, Rain Check, which is this sort of iridescent lavender, which pretty much applies clear. So I said that these are more of an improved formula compared to the Lux glosses. It's thinner, less sticky, and has less fragrance. I wouldn't call it a lip oil though. I didn't notice anything that was sort of oil-like and really nourishing. It just felt like a really thin gloss. It didn't have any long lasting hydration benefits of an oil um, and it wore off really fast because it was so thin. Both shades also didn't, they weren't anything to write home about because they were so sheer. They almost just looked like a clear, thin gloss and I didn't feel the need to keep them. So they're going. I did also want to point out that even though I didn't try them, uh, more recently in PR, I do have some Lux uh, lip oils and some Lux glosses. So these are from the Raw Beauty Christie collection. Um, these are from another collection. This is a whole lip pack. So I was actually sent some in PR and I've decided instead of actually using them because I don't enjoy the formula, I'm going to give them away to friends. All right. I jumped then into the So Juicy Plumping Glosses. So Colourpop obviously have different glosses. They are different formulas and I will try to explain the differences in my experience. 
Now with the So Juicy plumping glosses, the main difference is of course these have some plumping elements because they do have menthol, so they're a minty scent. So they have quite a strong mint scent and it does have that sort of slight tingly, not like chemical tingle, but definitely menthol tingle. So these are plumping. They also have the dispensing mechanism like this instead of like a wand or a doe foot applicator. You squeeze it out and you put it on, um, which can be good and can be bad. It's a really quick way to throw it on, but at the same time, um, I find that you can sort of over apply them and it can make them feel thicker than they need to be. When it comes to consistency of these, I found that they were in between these. So not as thin as the Lux lip oils and not as sticky and thick as the Lux glosses. So I found the consistency of these were a lot better than those two. And the main difference between the ultra glossy lip, which I haven't spoken about yet, but I will come to them soon. It's like their traditional gloss formula. It's the original and in my opinion, the best. Um, these, it's the minty sort of scent and the applicator that sort of varies with these. So I find that I don't like these personally as much as the ultra glossy lip, um, but I like them a lot more than these Lux things, which in my opinion, Lux. Another thing I wanted to note about these is that even though they have the menthol for the plumping, I didn't actually notice much of a plumping effect. So whether or not I put on this or just a normal ultra glossy lip, I just feel like it's the gloss that makes your lips look a bit fuller. Um, I don't actually think this had much plumping action at all. All right, I do have a swatch photo of these so you can see the shade differences. Um, she's here, looks more peachy compared to the other two. I would call this more of a neutral nude. So it's not too peachy, not too pink, not too brown, sort of quite neutral. Um, then I also have a roundabout, which on the hand looks a little bit more pink. In person, I think it's a little bit more of a mauve nude. And then Va Va Voom, you can see, is more of a translucent orange, sort of jelly sort of color with some gold shimmer. Now, I decided to keep only one of these because realistically, I don't need all three. Um, the ones I reach for the most are definitely the nudes. So the orange one, I decided to get rid of. And when it came down to these two, um, I thought I'd, I'd go roundabout because I like creams. I don't need things with shimmer in them. But I found that this on me looked a little bit milky. So they had a little bit of a layer where it sort of I don't know, it sort of settled in lines a little bit and looked a little bit, yeah, milky on the lips. Whereas I found uh, She's Here sort of worked a lot more organically with my lips. So I decided to keep this one. It is still your sort of glossy, thicker type lip gloss. Uh, if you apply too much, it's one of those ones that if you have your hair down, it's gonna get stuck in them. It is what it is, but it does wear quite nicely and I quite like the consistency of it. So I decided to keep that. All right, let's actually just finish off talking about uh, lip glosses from the range. And I'll talk about the three ultra glossy lips that I have um, from ColourPop. So two of them are fairly recent ones for me and one is a pretty old one. All right, so the first one I decided to try was Queen Cobra. Now this is almost like a translucent sort of sandy shade, um, but it does have a lot of what looks like silver or white iridescent shimmer in it. So even though it is quite warm based, so it does again have sort of that yellowy sandy effect, um, when you do swatch it, it does have a coolness to it because the, sh the shimmer that it captures a light is quite cool toned. It also makes it look really, really glossy, which I quite liked. I don't like that ColourPop have swapped out their doe foot applicators for the brushes because they always have these little like dangly bits. I really don't like that. I don't know why they decided to do that. I'd love to see them swap back to doe foot applicators. It's a far superior application method, but out of all the glosses, I have to say, these are my favorite formula of gloss ColourPop have. So what I wrote about this, I said it's the perfect thickness. 
It's thinner than the So Juicy and Luxe glosses and thicker than the Luxe lip oil. Has a soft vanilla scent that isn't overpowering or that lingers. You can't feel any sort of like chemical vibe going on. I find the Luxe gloss and the So Juicy, their scents do tend to linger because they are quite strong. One is minty, which I'm okay about, and that sort of artificial choc orange is gross. Um, this is a gloss that you can put on, it looks nice, it lasts a couple of hours, and you don't need to fuss with it. The only downside, like I said, is the little brush applicator. Uh, it's a huge downgrade from the doe foot. And then I went to describe this shade um, as being a little bit like the Berlin Girl Glow of a lip gloss um, world, and that's actually a highlighter. So it's almost like a beige base with a cool toned shimmer to it. So this can look a little bit frosty on me, but I think it's nice for just a quick sort of um, high shine effect. So I decided to keep that one. The next one, which is currently my most re reached for out of these three is the shade Rattler. This is a cream and it's this sort of brownie tone, which I really like. So this has more pigment than the last one. So we'll swatch it here so you can see. Um, it can look a little bit gray depending on your skin tone, but on me, it's a really beautiful nude. It's sort of like my lips, but glossier and more intense and beautiful. So you can see that one is glossy and sheer and one is pigmented. So I decided to keep them both because I love the formula. It's one of my favorite lip gloss formulas. And if I want to go sheer, I can go one. If I want to go pigmented, I can go the other. Then I've got this shade Scorcher, which I don't really like the shade, but there's a special category of keep and that is project pan keeping. So this shade is a translucent with different like um, size shimmer particles. It almost has a pearlescent shimmer to it, really micro shimmer. And then these weird chunks of um, what look like iridescent glitter particles. Um, you know, I don't love that. I don't need really glittery um, lip glosses, but ultimately when you do swatch it, it just looks like a glossy clear. And for some reason, I've already used half of this. So I'm not sure if you can see when you hold it up, it's down to here. And I thought, look, if it's down to there, I could probably pan it. So I decided even though this normally wouldn't be kept just because the shade, I don't necessarily like the shade. I would prefer to reach for this over this. Um, I do like the formula. And again, it's something I can pan. So that's going to go in a pan basket. Oh, and I realized I had another ultra blotted lip that I totally forgot to mention, but I did try it. Um, it's the shade Cypress Hill, which is this nice sort of um, berry shade. So I've got a photo of that on the screen. So what I pretty much said about this was it's a pretty enough shade, but it's not something I reach for often enough. And I'm sure I've got a similar shade in my collection with a less drying formula. So. Yeah, another ultra blotted that is completely out of my collection. See you later. All right, don't worry guys, I've got two more formulas to talk about. Um, and the next one is one that I was very surprised by. Um, and it shouldn't surprise me because I kept these for a reason. These are the ultra satin lips. Um, I've got the shade Bam, Dreamy, and I'll put on the screen. I'm gonna butcher it, it's a French name and I know I'm gonna pronounce it incorrectly, so I'll just put it on the screen. All right, so I first started with the shade Dreamy, which is this sort of peachy nude shade. Um, really, really pretty, really opaque, um, but unlike the Ultra Matte, it doesn't dry down like it's sucking the life out of your lips and then flaking away and trying to like get off your body. So it doesn't do that. It does settle down, but it's beautifully pigmented. Really, really nice. So what I said about this was the formula is head and shoulders above the ultra mattes. And if anyone wants to try ColourPop, go the ultra satins. They are far, far, far superior. And like I said, I have tried a lot of ultra mattes. I've decluttered them all because they're just too dry and hideous. These are really, really nice. This is opaque in one layer. It's comfortable on the lips, has a semi matte finish. So it has a bit of a shine to start with, but settles down to matte over time. It wears reasonably well. So this is not one of those lip products that you can wear for hours and hours through eating and meals and expect it to last, but it will wear well in between meals. 
Uh, it's a really pretty nude shade. I wore it a couple of times and I found that it suits most makeup looks, which is really nice. It's like a universal sort of peachy mid-tone nude. And I will keep this um, because A, I like it and I really enjoyed the looks that I wore with it. But also at the end, I'd like to see if I have other shades like this. If I do have dupes for this, um, we'll see which one reigns supreme. Um, but for now, I'm happy to keep this. I also tried the shade Bam, which is this really dark sort of black cherry red shade, really, really pretty. Now, what I said about this was I was pleasantly surprised by the color. It's very opaque and a really pretty vampy red. It doesn't wear off patchy or flaky, but instead it wears down to more of a stained red look without it actually staining. I've got photos on the screen of when I first applied it and after four hours of wear, I would definitely consider keeping this, but realistically, I don't wear dark reds in my life too often. I feel like they don't really suit me and I feel like they emphasize my uneven uh, sort of lips. So I decided not to keep this, but I really did like the formula. It was really nice. All right, this one here was the standout for me hands down of the month. If I had to say that this was my worst lip product of the month, this was my favorite. It was such a pleasant surprise. I have worn this multiple times and I do think there are some times where it's an optimal beauty and it wears super, super well and other times it doesn't wear as well, but God damn, I've worn this twice this month and it is really, really pretty. So what I said about this was you can pry this out of my cold, dead, hands. All right, that's dramatic, but this is a lip color that whenever I put on, I take a moment to mentally process the wow that this beautiful, bright red, orange toned lip product gives. It's just really, really beautiful. The formula is quite nice. It never settles down to a dry matte and it doesn't ever feel crumbly. Similar to the other shades, it looks a little bit shiny when you first put it on and then it sort of fades down to a soft matte. Um, but since this doesn't completely dry down, it can transfer a little bit. So just be mindful of that. But it is really easy to apply, opaque in one layer, really, really bold, really beautiful. The shade is amazing. Um, one thing I wanted to point out about this was that it wore perfectly through dinner and I wore it for 10 hours. I put this on at about two o'clock, one o'clock in the afternoon. I'll have a photo on the screen and then like the end of the day, I didn't even want to take this off. My makeup looked like crap around it, but my lips were like perfection, like perfection. What the actual fuck? So this, I'm keeping, I'm keeping it. Even if I've got a dupe, I'm keeping it. Now I might actually apply it so I can show you what it's like. I do want to point out what I'm wearing now is um, Maybelline. So if you wanted to know what I've got on my lips. I will be talking about this and it is a uh, lip product from Maybelline. So keep that in mind. Uh, but I do want to demonstrate this because it is so beautiful. I do want to say though that you can wear it a little bit thick. So if you apply it a little bit thick, it can sort of feel at times if you're talking a lot, like it bunches up in little areas. It's not a big problem, um, but it is best if you just apply a nice thin layer, which I'll do now. Can see that it just instantly is this bright it's like a red toned orange like i'd say it's predominantly orange with a little bit of red so that's the shade there um it is bold it is gorgeous i love it, it wears so well um the only thing that's annoying about it is i believe it was a limited edition shade so um, that's a bummer, but I do have to say, if you want a liquid lipstick from ColourPop and you want it to be opaque, the satins are far superior to the mattes. Just, I can't say that enough. The last ColourPop range I'm talking about before I get on to some random sort of, uh, sort of drug story type products is the Lux Velvets. Now, again, I did have quite a selection of these and I decided to only keep a few and I will show you on the screen why I don't like these and I will just you know, talk about them. Now ColourPop have such a huge range of like liquid lipsticks and it can get really confusing about what the difference is. Now satin like these, really opaque, but they don't dry down to that really, really dry desert lip. 
The ultra mattes do dry down, but they're super opaque, similar to this, but they're just a lot drier. Um, and then you've got the blotted that do dry down again to that dry finish, um, but they're sheerer. Now these are sheerer, but similar to the ultra satin, they don't dry down completely. Now these feel like a silicon primer with some pigment in it and that you put on the lips. So it gives a sort of blotted matte velvet effect, um, but it never dries down and it is a little bit movable. So it never dries down to that dry desert look that the ultra blotted lip has, but it does have that sheerer effect if that makes sense. But you can always smear them and move them. And because they do, they look almost, they don't capture the light because again, they have that sort of silicon slip to them. So they're a lot different in formula. These you can sort of just keep working in because they have that silicon slip that moves about. Whereas these dry down and stay put. So that's sort of the difference between the Luxe Velvet and the Ultra Blotted. They're both sheer. They both have a matte sort of finish. This is dry. This is like a silicon. Now I've got three shades in this and um, spoiler alert, I'm not going to keep any. There were two that I sort of wanted to keep. One was this nude because it's a beautiful shade. It's like a nice brown tone. Sort of reminds me a little bit of um, that lip gloss, the um, Rattler that I have that I really like. I love those tones. It's like a brownie tone nude. It's really, really beautiful. I love the look of this. Um, it's sort of, yeah, just a sort of sandy nude. I loved it. Um, so when I first put it on, I'm like, I'm going to keep this. This is gorgeous. I love it. It's not going to last very long because it's sort of smeary. But then a couple of hours later, I looked at my lips and I saw this. Uh, because they do move about constantly, I found that you can get gathering with the pigment sort of like gathers on the rim of your lips and just looks hideous. And because this one, even though it's not like a super light uh, nude, I found it was almost like the light pigment just gathered in one area and it looked hideous. Now, I did declutter other shades like a year ago because it did the same thing. So it's not a problem that's exclusive to this shade. It's a problem that's exclusive to this formula. Now, when I did try these two other shades, so I've got Puddin, which is this beautiful orange tone. I was also really wanting to keep this because it's this beautiful orange tone. When I wore it, I'm like, that's it. I want this. It's gorgeous. But it only lasted like not even an hour on my lips because it was so... It moved so much, which I thought wasn't great. I've also got the shade here, Get Money, um, which is more of a darker nude. And um, I didn't really love this. It wasn't a shade that I would reach for. So um, because of the formula alone, I decided to get rid of these. But I would love to track down dupes of this orange and this sort of sandy nude, preferably in like the ultra sat satin formula. So it wears really nicely and is comfortable on the lips. Um, so yeah, these looked really pretty. I just didn't like how they wore. So they're gone. You might notice that I'm missing the Lux Bullet Lipsticks. Now I did have a few of those shades, but I had a similar issue that I had with this where it just bunched up in different, like in on the inner rim. So I got rid of those um, maybe about a year ago because I just didn't like how they wore down. They looked really pretty on the lips, but again, that sort of silicon um, velvet sort of effect it gives just wears off patchy and really horribly. So yeah, I have no luck with the ColourPop Lux range. Um, anything with Lux on it, I'm like, that is not for me. Um, my winners by far, if I was to recommend lip products from ColourPop, if you actually want a bullet lipstick, I'd say lippy sticks are great. If you want a tint, I do like just a tint. Um, my favorite lip glosses are definitely uh, the Ultra Glossy Lip. Um, if I want something opaque and liquid form, uh, the Ultra Satin are beautiful. And I don't mind the So Juicy as well if you prefer that minty sort of um, slightly plumping vibe. All right, let's just quickly run through some other sort of drugstore products that I decided to try uh, towards the end of the month because I felt like it was sort of fitting for the price category. I decided to start with the Mega Last Liquid Catsuit High Shine Lipsticks. Now I have tried the mattes. I ended up decluttering them over time because they were quite drying on me, but I did like the High Shine formula. This shade Petal 
Poison is a really, really beautiful sort of um, long wearing glossy lipstick. I would call this just a straight up gloss, but they call it a lipstick. Pretty much what I said about this is that I love this formula. Um, it's not too thick, it's not too thin, it's not too sticky, not too watery. Um, it wears really nicely. It's just that I don't love the color. So I'll have a photo, couple of photos of me on the screen Wearing this, I found that any sort of light pinky shades or any sort of nudie pinks or anything like that tends to look quite bold on me, quite bubblegum, and it's just not something I'm a big fan of. I prefer, again, sort of your sandy, brownie nudes. Um, this was just something that I found it looked a little bit too sort of fairy pink on me. So just the shade alone I decided to get rid of but I do really like the formula. Then I've also got the shade Bad Girls Club, which is this beautiful sort of um, candy apple red, um, a lot more opaque. So I can see why this is a lipstick. I would call that other one a gloss. Um, the photo on the screen, this looks amazing. It's such a beautiful shade, really vibrant, really glossy, um, stands out really beautifully, but even you don't even need to eat this will wear off within an hour to two hours. And I found that if I want a bold lip, I want the bold lip to last. I don't like a sheer red. Sheer reds just aren't my cup of tea. So if this lasted really beautifully, I would keep it in a heartbeat, but because it didn't last, um, I decided to get rid of it. I've got two Ulta 3 Get Glossy High Shine Lip Lacquers. I've got the shade Naturally Nude. And I've also got the shade Clear As Day. Now, I'm not gonna beat around the bush with these. Um, they're quite a nice lip gloss. This one is gray on me. It looks quite corpse gray. Um, I'll have a photo on the screen of me wearing it quite built up and it does look a little bit jarringly gray. Sheared out, there'll be a photo on the screen. It's quite nice. It's like a cool toned, um, just a really slight cool toned gloss. So I've got it here as well. One thing I didn't like about this is again, it just doesn't last very long and um, it has a really strong artificial like fruity strawberry scent that again has that sort of chemical tingle, which I don't love. I was going back and forwards about whether or not to keep this. I don't mind it sheared out. I think it looks really pretty on the lips, but I just figured it's something I don't really want to reach for too often. So I decided not to keep that. Um, I did decide instead to keep the clear um, and I want to compare this to other glosses I have at the end of the project, because as far as I can remember, I don't have many just straight up clear glosses. And this is really beautifully glass like sheen. Like it is, if you want a sheer gloss that just makes everything like look smooth and wet, this one is beautiful. So um, even though I don't love the scent, um, it is a really gorgeous looking clear gloss. So I decided to keep that just because I wasn't sure if I had another one in my collection or not. Another thing I am keeping is the lipstick I was wearing before I put this on. This is the Maybelline Superstay Ink Crayon. And this is in the shade, I should know, uh, 10, Trust Your Gut. This is a really beautiful shade. It has like a mauve sort of cool toned element to it. I'll swatch it over here. You did see it before. Um, beautiful sort of cool toned mauve. So pretty much what I said about this is that because it is a crayon, um, it is really easy to apply, but also really precisely to apply. So I love this small um, sort of bullet rather than your traditional lipstick. This has a pretty strong vanilla scent that fades as it starts to set. So when you first apply it, um, it does sort of glide on and feel a little bit sort of slippery and wet. But then after a minute or two, it starts to feel a little bit tacky and starts to dry down. As it starts to dry down, it does look more matte and it's got more of a grip to it rather than a slip when you sort of um, move your lips together. What I like about this is it does last for a few hours, but as it sort of fades down, it looks quite flattering. It doesn't sort of look really jarring on the lips, doesn't wear off patchy or flaky. So I decided to keep this because it's something I can pan in the future. It'd be really easy to keep track of. It's a shade that I'd be happy to wear on a daily basis. And I really do like the formula. So I decided to keep that. Another really beautiful uh, nude lipstick that I decided to keep was by Essence. This is the This Is Me 
lipstick in 03 bold. It's just a really beautiful creamy nude. So I'll swatch it next to the Maybelline one just so you can get a comparison. This is a little bit warmer and that's a little bit cooler. Um, this one doesn't wear as long as the Maybelline one, um, but it is a really beautiful, comfortable lipstick. So what I wrote about this is it's really comfortable, creamy, thin lipstick. It's opaque in one layer. Um, it's a beautiful My Lips But Better shade. So it's one of those ones you can put in your handbag and just apply whenever. Has a pleasant, mild, fruity scent that you can smell when you first apply it, but it does fade down, so it's not obnoxious. This lasts a good four to five hours with minimal eating or drinking, and it does sort of lose the creaminess throughout that time. So uh, it starts really creamy and then sort of fades down to more of a matte. Um, if you do have larger sort of greasier meals, this will sort of disappear straight away. Um, but it is just a really easy lipstick. You can reapply it no problem. Um, and it's just one that I think I'll just keep around until the end of the project. If I've got heaps of dupes for it, I might get rid of it. But as it is, it's a perfectly nice lipstick. Two lipsticks that I find really intriguing, but I've decided to declutter. These are by L'Oreal. They're the L'Oreal Infallible Pro Matte Liquid Lipstick. So the first one I decided to try was from the Chocolate Range. This one's called Dose of Cocoa. All right, I'm gonna read my notes on this because I've got some very extensive notes because I found this to be quite intriguing. Um, I will swatch it. So this is a very cool toned um, lip. So very similar to that lip gloss, but a matte version. So very, very grayish. Now the other shade that I have is uh, Angora, which is even more gray and dark. So I'll swatch this next to that one as well. So this is a bit more purple. So darker grayish, lighter grayish, very similar to that lip gloss but just no opaque um, sort of matte liquid version. All right, so I said that these will last through an Armageddon. It is the typical consistency of a liquid lipstick, very opaque, not too, too thick, has a strong fragrance to it. The chocolate one has this sort of, I don't know, artificial coffee, hazelnut, weird, weird scent. And this one, this uh, non-chocolate one, has like a butterscotch schnapps sort of scent to it. So they're not gross, but they smell really artificial. I said the formula dries down matte, but doesn't ever feel powdery, dry or flaky, sort of unlike those ColourPop ones. But this is one of those liquid lipsticks that it feels like you've got a layer on your lips at all times. So I would call this quite suffocating. Feels like your lips can't breathe. I know lips don't breathe. So I said that this feels like you have a layer of house paint on your lips and the longer you wear it, the heavier it feels. It doesn't wear off, but it does look quite scrappy after a couple of hours of wear. So it starts to look a little bit puckered and it pulls away from the inner portion of the lips. So at the start, it looks quite flattering, but as it wears, it looks a little bit beat up. So definitely a pro to this really budge proof formula is that it wears and wears and wears. I wore these for about eight to 10 hours and um, I'll show you a photo on the screen. It did look quite opaque, it didn't fade down, but it did have those sort of worn away edges that made it look a little bit messy if you looked up close. I think also because these had gray tones, you could really see the fleshy color of my lips sort of contrast with them. Um, but otherwise, if you want a budge proof lipstick and you don't mind that heavy feel, these a budge proof. I did find that the colors, even though they aren't things I'd reach for every day, they did look pretty cool. In some lighting, this um, sort of chocolate one, this dose of cocoa was really, really gorgeous. It almost gave like a really plump full lip look, but then in other like lighting, it sort of looked like corpse lips. So I was a little bit torn about whether or not to keep this. I did like the color, but I wouldn't wear it too often. And then this darker one, this um, Angora, I was just like, look again, it is very, it's like an edgy color and I'm just not edgy enough to sort of wear this on a daily basis. Um, but I was tempted. It's, they're intriguing and I'll definitely try these in maybe a red or more of a My Lips But better sort of nude so it doesn't look so jarring but they were intriguing and they were fun to play with. So I decided to not keep those and um, another thing I decided not to keep but I 
Look, there's part of me that really wanted to. This is by Milani. It's the Amour Matte Lip Cream in 12 Loved. Um, this is definitely a shade that I can wear probably a little bit more frequently, but it it's taken, it's going more into the sort of terracotta reds than it is nude, um, but that's the shade there. Now, what I really loved about this, and I was really torn, this is so beautiful when you first apply it. It's really thin, it's really opaque. Um, it sets down really fast, so there's not much like, you know, smearing or moving. It's got a nice soft caramel scent, so I think it's just a little bit more toned down and it doesn't linger. This also wears really nicely. It does dry down completely matte, so it doesn't transfer much. I wear, did wear it under a mask and it was like, it wore pretty well. The only reason I've decided to get rid of this is because it is like one of those life-suckingly dry lip products and it actually makes my lips look puckered. And I just could always feel the texture on my lips always felt dry. So even though it looked gorgeous, it applied really well, it wore really well, I just didn't love the dryness. But luckily it never got to the stage where it flakes off your face. Um, it was nice and thin, it's just something I wouldn't reach for. Um, I do wanna say as well that I wore um, these guys under a mask and normally I would say with masks, your mask eats your makeup. Like it takes your makeup off your face and like eats it. These were so motherfucking budge proof and so full on that they ate the mask. So when I took my mask off, I had little fibers of mask stuck to my lips because these bad boys just were like, nah, you're coming with me. So these will last through the apocalypse. Not my apocalypse, but a worldwide apocalypse these would last through. The last thing I wanted to try, um, and this is the very last thing of the project, I know this is very, very long, um, is the NYX Extra Creamy Lipstick, I think it's called, it's all rubbed off, in the shade Snow White. Now this is just a beautiful creamy dark red lipstick. It's a really, really beautiful vampy color. Um, I love the color, I just don't love the formula. So when I applied this, it was a bit slippery, it sort of smears and slides everywhere. You gotta be quite precise with it, otherwise it sort of can look a bit messy. I find that dark reds on me always look a bit messy because my lip line isn't super neat. So it always just looks a little bit scrappy. Nice and glossy, beautiful effect, nice rich red. Um, but again, after, I think I was at a friend's house and I was literally eat, drinking soda water and eating corn chips. And this wore off in like an hour or two where there was a point where it was like almost nothing there. So for me, it's just a shade that I probably wouldn't reach for too often. And if I did reach for it, I would want one that lasts a lot better than this. And I am sure that I've got some nice dark reds in my collection that will last through soda water and corn chips, plain corn chips, not even like flavored corn chips. So yeah, this for me didn't cut it. All right, so those are all the lip products I decided to try and my mini reviews and if I'm keeping them or not uh, for January. February is gonna be a smaller month, so hopefully this video won't be as long as this current one is, but um, maybe I'll be a little bit less detailed with my notes, um, but I kept these guys. So out of the 44 lip products that I tried this month, I'm keeping 11, which I think is pretty good. And two of them I'm pretty much keeping to pan in the future. And a couple I will go through at the end of the project and see if I have any dupes for them to see if they're worthwhile keeping. But 11 out of 44, I'm pretty impressed by. So these are the so these are lip products that are going, so I will keep tally of them. I'm gonna get rid of them because I don't see the point of just hoarding mass amounts of lip products, but 33 lip products are going after this month um, and I feel really good about it. So this is sort of my way of decluttering my collection where I feel really comfortable getting rid of the products. I'm happy to get rid of these. I've tested them, I've tried them, and I know I don't need them. Um, sort of my benchmark is if I wouldn't wanna reach for these in the next three or four months, why would I keep them? So that's sort of what I'm doing. And I know that not every month I'll get rid of this amount of products. There will be months where I'm doing sort of like, for example, my hourglass lipsticks, which happen to be my favorite formula. And I might keep every single one of them. So I'm gonna try to be ruthless where I know 
I can spare it and there will be months where I'm a lot more conservative, but hopefully overall I'll be able to get my collection down to hoping under like 200 lipsticks. Is that reasonable? I feel like that's reasonable. Anyway, guys, hopefully you enjoyed that and you vibed with this project. If you don't, that's cool. Um, if you wanted more details of the shades I talked about, um, I'll have them in the description box below. And I'm thinking maybe for Feb, I will test or go through my Mac collection. So I'll be back in March with my next update and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.